Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. A beautiful Thursday and most of Friday is going to be great, but we've got a big storm system heading our way Friday night into Saturday. And there's some interesting scenarios here where we could see a little severe weather, though I'm not as concerned about that right now, but it's something to keep an eye on. But the flood threat is probably the biggest risk with this whole thing. So let's get right to it. Fog burning off this morning, moving out. Some people don't like to say burning off. It's mixing out really in reality. But you can see our system developing back to the west. This is our low pressure system. This is going to be heading our way. So by tomorrow, we'll already see increasing clouds. And eventually, we're going to see rain develop tomorrow night into Saturday. The heart of this actually looks to be happening mainly in the early morning hours Saturday. Um, if you got Saturday plans, I know you're already saying, oh, oh, what's going on here? I don't want to call it a complete washout Saturday, but you better have backup plans. I do think it gets better as the day goes on, which I'll explain, but I just want you to be prepared now. Saturday's probably not a great day. I probably would have a backup plan for just about anything. So let's get right to the details here. I'm going to turn a bunch of stuff off here as I'm doing this in real time uh, so you can see this. I don't want all this stuff on the map, so we'll turn off all the, the uh, overlays here. Um, and we'll get right to the severe weather outlook. We'll start today. You see in the middle of the country where the storm is now. Tomorrow, you see the progress off to the east. Go to Saturday. So this is a little bit of an update. Yesterday, the severe weather risk is mainly to the south, but you see here in the Carolinas. Now, you see the medium risk up to the Charlotte area. I do think there's some, some questions or what, let's call it uncertainty. How far north this threat gets? I think it's going to stop roughly right at the state line. So up here, there's some big question marks because we know there's going to be big storms going on down here. And oftentimes that blocks some of the energy. And if it rains here all morning long, it might stabilize things. So that's why there's some question marks. But one thing we know for sure, it is going to be a very wet pattern with this system. Because I'm going to show you uh, something else here real quickly. This is the, the, the Weather Prediction Center puts this out. It's actually the flash flood guidance. And I've showed you this before. Low to medium risk there back to the west. As we go into tomorrow, notice that we've got the high risk over parts of Atlanta where there's a flood watch in effect, by the way. Northern Georgia coming into the Carolinas. So a medium to low risk for flash flooding already on Friday. And that's primarily for Friday night. So this is, you know, these, these outlooks usually go from you know, 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. So 7 a.m. one day to the next day. So this includes the overnight hours into Saturday morning. So you would, you would that, that's why you're seeing the low to medium risk. But let's even go to Saturday. This is 7 a.m. Saturday to 7 a.m. Sunday. You see that the low to medium risk is over. But notice how most of it is to the south. So South Carolina folks, you're watching this. You actually have the biggest risk of both severe weather and flash flooding. North Carolina folks, it's kind of a little bit more of a question mark. So let's get right into the future cast. All right, so we'll jump right into the future cast here. This is starting at 10 a.m. today. We'll go through today, no issues today. We'll go into tomorrow. We'll get into early tomorrow morning. This is about 6 a.m. We'll stop this around 7 a.m. So what's going to happen tomorrow is we're going to start to see the flow, almost a little bit of a wedge or cold air damming coming from the northeast. Now that could provide some light sprinkle showers, drizzle mist. So probably not the greatest of day on Friday, but it's not the heavy rain. This is going to be light stuff. But as we get into the afternoon hours, we might see some rain develop by 2 or 3 o'clock. It's still light stuff, but it's once we get into Friday night. Look at all these heavy storms developing um, down to our south and west. This is why I think there's going to be thunderstorms ongoing down here to our south. These storms will be going gangbusters. But because the rain starts up here early and it's light, what we call stratiform rain, just your normal, typical rain, that might stabilize things, keep things somewhat cool and less buoyant for big time thunderstorms. So while it's going to be raining, it would be less severe. But look at the, the heavy rain that develops overnight and Saturday morning. I mean, this is four o'clock Saturday morning. So we're getting heavy rain. The storms are down here. Actually, notice down here towards Montgomery. I mean, there's definitely some storms going on. There might be some embedded thunder, but it's going to be called what we call elevated. So not down to the surface. That's just a lot of heavy rain. And that could stabilize things, keeping things somewhat tame. We'll go into Saturday morning. We'll go to about noon. You could see that the storms become more scattered. So if we're going to see storms, I actually think it's going to be in the afternoon if we get some warm air surging north. And that's the key part. Where is the warm front? Is it here? Does it get up here? Does it get down to here? So the warm front, it's all about tracking that on Saturday. But you can see in the afternoon, while the storms are still and the rain is scattered, it's still there. That's why I said if you have planned Saturday, have a backup plan. You can see the, the scattered storms developing ahead of the front as we go into the evening hours. So there's likely going to be maybe a secondary wave of rain with this. So let me show you something real quickly that I, I show you sometimes called the significant tornado parameter. And right away people get, oh, a tornado. 
remember, this is a, a, a composite index. And what I mean by that is this is showing you a whole bunch of parameters in one product. So it's wind shear, it's buoyancy, um, it's all kinds of different products, uh, you know, low level moisture that come together to show us the probability of fuel for tornadic storms. It doesn't always mean tornadoes, but it does mean severe weather often. So if I show you the tornado parameter, um, and again, we'll go through time, we'll go through tomorrow, no issues. We'll get into Saturday. I'm going to stop this Saturday morning about uh, 7 a.m. Notice not a lot going on. So we're, we're stable. But watch what happens as we go into the afternoon hours. By about 3, 4 o'clock into the evening hours, you see that big surge of fuel. So right in here in the evening, this is, this is Saturday evening, the potential that this sneaks up. But notice it never really gets over here. So this is why there's a lot of question marks about severe weather potential as we go into Saturday. So one of the things I want to show you is the fuel for storms, and we'll show you that quickly. So real quickly, let's back this up just to show you. This is early Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. I'm going to stop this mid-afternoon. Where is that warm front? Let's look at the Cape or thunderstorm fuel to see where it is. All right, this product is what we often call thunderstorm fuel, but it's actually Cape for all the weather geeks out there. This is convectively available potential energy. Um, you don't need to know the scale, just know the brighter the colors, the more of it there is. If you're really interested in the scale, you can look at the top. It goes from zero here, which is in joules per, per, per kilogram squared, goes all the way up to 2,000 as you get into the red. Typically, to get thunderstorms at all, you want something at 500 to get decent thunderstorms around 1,000. So there's some rough numbers in there. Um, it just depends on other parameters like wind shear. But 1,000 is a big deal, all right? That's yellow, okay? So that would be enough. So we go through tonight into tomorrow. Um, we go into early Saturday. Notice not a lot going on. No thunderstorm fuel. We're stable. That's what I mean. Where is the warm front? Oftentimes, the leading edge of this is where the warm front is. So you can see we're kind of in that wedge orientation. So the warm front's probably here. We've got northeast winds. And so all the fuel for storms is down here. But watch as this changes throughout the day on Saturday. So we're, we're stable. Two o'clock, we're still really stable, though. Up in South Carolina, it's creeping closer. We get into the afternoon hours, four, five, six o'clock. Ah, oh, the fuel's getting close. So you see there is some, <laughs> this is going to be like an all or nothing kind of thing. And it often is this time of year, to be honest with you. If this happens and there's any storms that develop ahead of this Saturday evening, that's where we'll see severe weather. It's going to be Saturday late in the day if that fuel can get up there. So notice most of the day Saturday, and it could be one of those things. And this is how things can change on Saturday. You say, okay, there's a threat for severe weather. Let's say this wedge or the cold air, which it often does, the, when I say cold, more stable air, holds on up here. Big time storms are going crazy down here. Two things are happening. This will stabilize. This will keep thunderstorms away in this area. And the fact that the inflow of warm, moist air will get blocked by storms down here. It'll be like a wall blocking it off. And then nothing will happen up here. So that's why I said if you're in South Carolina, there's a much more... Um, I would say a higher chance or likelihood of seeing severe weather than North Carolina right now. But we've got another day to watch this, several more guidance runs, a, a lot of small things happening in a, in a very uh, small area here. So we'll keep an eye on this, but just know that Saturday is not going to be a great day weather-wise. Flash flooding is a huge risk, and potentially we could see some severe weather. Before I leave you, let me show you rainfall totals quickly. All right, real quickly, some rainfall totals here. So this is today, tomorrow. You know, through early Saturday, you see not much. We'll go through Saturday night into Sunday. Notice there's a pretty big gradient here as well. So uh, if you're wondering, you know, if you're going to get a ton of rain, severe weather, South Carolina, everything I showed you, if you're south of the border, you're probably got a higher chance of seeing flooding and severe weather. North, it's an ugly day, but less severe weather risk. So pay attention to this line, this gradient. It could be one of those things where South Charlotte could have two, three inches of rain in Monroe, Fort Mill, Tiga K you know, Rock Hill area, Indian land, and then Cornelius, Huntersville, Mooresville, you know, you know, parts of Cabarrus County, Concord, Harrisburg, Kannapolis, over towards Denver and Westport might only have an inch, inch and a half. So there's going to be a pretty tight gradient and it's right across their areas. So stay tuned. I'll have updates today on WCNC.com and all day Friday as we get you ready for a rough start to the weekend.